take life on earth to the second birth and the man was in Pyramid One Radio Network is the most unique radio network in the world. It's growing larger, faster than any informative radio network anywhere on this planet. On the show, we talk about problems in our countries, our world, and a lot more, including ancient civilizations, quantum science, paranormal, spiritual, new age, Healing experts, past life regressions, ancient crystal skulls, conspiracy, and our real-time connections with other dimensions. We also have special guests that are the ingredients of our world community that help to make our planet a better place for everyone. My guests come from all over the world, Hawaii, France, Africa, Bosnia, England, Scotland, Holland, Canada, Mexico, and many, many more countries. Just go to www.pyramid1network.com and click on Bob Charles Show Blogs to see the menu of guests week to week. You can also call into the shows by dialing one 843 Three zero zero one three nine nine. Help us to help humanity and listen and learn to the shows you will be hearing more of right here on Pyramid One Radio Network. is a Pyramid One International Network presentation. Hi, and welcome to the Bob Charles Show right here on PyramidOneNetwork.com. Let me tell you about the guest that's coming up. Her name is Suzanne Lee. She is a psychotherapist, an author, an artist, and a channeler, helping others to connect with their multidimensional selves. Suzanne teaches us about the unconsciousness, the consciousness, and the superconsciousness, pathways to our full awakening, to find the light of our true self, we must be willing to face our darkness. Since Suzanne was a very young child, she had a vision of other realities in which everything looks, smells, sounds, and feels different. She has channeled much of her writings and channeled drawings of these realities. Suzanne says we are most fortunate to be incarnated in this special era, which initiates our return home into our true multidimensional self. Author of book series, Palladian Perspective on Ascension, volumes one through four. The journey of the four books flowed from the Pallades to Earth and back again over several generations of Palladians that were human and humans that were Palladians. The first three books were about transcendence of humans and Palladians. Book four presented a possible 
reality in which humans and Palladians could serve in unity to transcend a planet. May I introduce to the nation, to the world, Suzanne Lee. Oh, yeah. How are we doing there, Doctor? I'm doing great. Well, I'm there, doing good. There you go. You're sounding good. We, uh, you know, I tell you, when, when I did the, uh, the introduction, and that for you, I tell you, I got a million questions. <laughs> I, I hope you're ready. Oh, okay. Great. I'm glad. I'm oh, serious. A little bit of business. I surrendered my psychotherapy license because I'm now going into a reality that they would not really be happy about. So I just let go of yet another anchor to the 3d so just wanted to let you know that so that the readers know that as well wow i still do readings and i still have a phd and i still have what 40 years of counseling but i let go of the the 3d limitations oh so you're still doctor but not doctor doctor that's right <laughs> <laughs> it's okay you know we'll, we'll get that straight <laughs> Thank now you. you i i have the first book and I went through the whole book. And what I'd like you to do really, really is, like, tell me, like, how you got to the point that you wrote all four books. Because <laughs> this is, I mean, just going through the first book, I can't wait to see two, three, and four. But the the whole idea that you have here, I mean, I've talked about this on the show before. And people gave me emails and, that and said, are you sure? You know, you know <laughs> were, you, were you okay when you were talking about that? And I'm saying to them, I said, look, you guys don't get it through your thick head. This has been going on for millions and millions and millions of years. Yes. And, and actually, the first, the first being that I talked to was the Palladian being called Matria, which right. is the name of the person. And different people say the name differently depending on their own language. But I call her Matria or, um, from the book. And, uh, how it occurred, this is a really interesting story, because one morning I woke up from a dream and I saw standing at the foot of my bed, obviously a Palladian. He was in full uniform and had badges and all those things. And he spoke to me and said, messages from home. So I got up and came into my office and opened up my computer and started typing. And every word was channeled. I did not know what I was going to write until I saw it on the page. It was the most amazing experience. And I put it all on my blog and people were on the blog and we were all laughing and talking. It was it was a wonderful experience. I loved it. Was that five five five? Five five five? I don't Yeah. Oh. In the in the beginning and I read this story in it because I, I get up at four four four. <laughs> so Oh okay. Five five oh I see. <laughs> yes, I don't yeah. remember what time it was. If I said it on that paper somewhere, then that's what it was. <laughs> it says no. It says it's April eleventh, twelve twelve, and the California yeah. sun still below the horizon. After yeah. a long, complex dream of being in someone else's house and realizing yes. it was time for me to leave and to go to my own house, I woke up at five 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 with the words "transmissions from home." Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for reminding me because that's exactly what I wrote that day. And, you know, I, I function a lot in the now when I channel the Arcturians, which is probably a great deal of my waking life. I'm in the now. And so that transition of going back to time and what I'm supposed to do in the future and what I did in the fat past, it's like, I, not important. <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> so uh, I forget those details. Plus, that was quite a while since then. Well, you know what? I tell you, let's, let's go back, as I said, now, from, the, from the very, very beginning. Okay, so someone told you to go and write. Was this yeah, automatic? Was this automatic? Trick. Yeah, was this automatic writing? Were you channeling into the writing? Was this channeled by someone else and you were just taking it from what they were telling you and putting it on paper? Well, I've been receiving I've been receiving messages since I was a child. I always had this light being next to me and I figured well this was Jesus cuz I went to church and what else would that be? Then later on I heard from like four different places that Jesus was an Arcturian, so that made sense. Mm. Uh 
And uh, after my my children were off of college, it really went into the next octave because I had more time. And then also, this was like in 93 when they were just starting to have computers. And so it made it easier to do it. I was one of the first websites up. Um, and uh, that was because the Arcturians said, do a website. And they nagged me and nagged me and nagged me until finally I did the website. Um, the first one, the multidimensions.com. But um, so how I would have to say is that all of those things and none of those things in that um, the distance between what I'm channeling and who I'm channeling and myself is, is merged. So if I were to write out a grocery bill or a list of the bills I have to pay or something like that, that would totally be my 3D self. But like this morning, I woke up and I said, Dear Turians, do you have a message for me? Bang! This whole big six pages of message came through um, pretty much as fast as I can type. Um, and that's how this experience is and was uh, back then. Um, I had been channeling quite a while by the time that the Palladian book had come in. And I was very familiar with the Palladian energy field because I had written a lot that Matria had shared with me. So I, I would say that the me that resonates to that frequency connected them and me into one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. As a matter of fact, you know, I, I tell you, though, I wish I had your friends. I mean, I, I got told by a, a psychic that uh, I have reptilians following me around. <laughs> so, Oh, yes. Well, uh, you know, there are ascended reptilians, too. And I've met a couple of those inside of my multidimensional self, too. And in fact, I think it's in the second book uh, that there's a major reptilian person, Frank Qua, which is somebody that I've met quite a while ago too and they can ascend and there's many that are ascended and they are amazingly intelligent and sharp and totally dedicated so so they're going to send that humans should be able to right so yeah so they're the the uh, what would you call it um bed benevolent bed benevolent whatever guy they're, they're the good guys yeah uh <laughs> Benevolent. Benevolent, yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm reading I'm reading and watching screens and everything else at the same time, so my mouth doesn't work sometimes. I know, I understand. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, don't worry. My my kneecap fits very well in my mouth. <laughs> so, so anyway, let, let's go let's go on to a little bit of the book and that because I want people to, to know what, what's coming up. I mean, if you get the first book, I can I can just see it. I mean I can I can envision what, what's coming after this and it will only get more um, constructive. I think in I think in the other books in that you actually take things apart. In the first one, you put it out there. Yes. Uh, what I uh, what I do is that I tell the story in the first book of the Palladians, and it starts with Matria talking about when they finally settled down and began their civilization in that star system, and then how. Um, Matria had her awakening and then it went into how Matre had his awakening and then how they had a child and then, well I don't want to give too much of the plot, but then what happened is that they needed to be separated to do their work um, and Matria and Matre are divine compliments but in the book there, sometimes they're together and sometimes they're apart because sometimes they have missions that are different. But they're always together in their consciousness. They can always communicate with each other through their consciousness. And then in book two um, and three, book two, it talks about life on the mothership and people really loved that. Um, because people are beginning to remember little bits of pieces. And so whenever they can read something about what it's like on the mothership, and that one goes into great detail. And uh, I know now, I really know that I go on the mothership quite a bit, but I, I don't remember it very clearly until I write it. Because we all have different ways that we can capture that 
information because our 3D brain says, no, no, this is not right. You can't say this. And so we have to find a way that we can bypass that uh, brainwashed system. Yeah. Because we've all been brainwashed and brainwashed and brainwashed and brainwashed. Exactly. So uh, the way that I was able to bypass all of that was through writing. And and I'm a writer, so therefore that would be it, mm-hmm. you know. And through pictures, because I also am an artist, so that would be it. And and basically anything that gives us the same uh, the same kind of higher frequency as a creative endeavor, whether it's athletics or dance or singing or gardening, whatever it is, that's how we're going to pull through this energy because that's when we're in the highest state of consciousness. Let me go into the book a little bit since we're since we're on that subject. It says Great. one of the, one of the sections on here on part one. All right, now I'm going to give a couple of them. You can pick out whichever one you want to explain about because these are these are too good. Okay. Part one: meeting your divine compliments, finding freedom, returning to our multi-dimensional self, which is one I'd like to uh, have you comment on, and two realities at once. Now, I've been accused of that one, too, because <laughs> that, there are different dimensions, and you don't have yeah. to always be speaking in the one that you're seeing or sitting in right now. Absolutely. So your now is now, but it could be two seconds from now, which could be another dimension anywhere. You don't go backwards, you go forwards. Well, uh, yes, and when um, the Arcturians and in the book and whenever I speak of now, I'm speaking of now in the fifth dimension and beyond when there's no longer time because in the third and fourth dimension there's time and limitation and all of these kinds of rules. And anyone that knows anything about what space travel really is, they don't call it space, they call it time and space travel because um, as you move further away from uh, the atmosphere of Earth, you move out of Earth time. And so there's a different kind of time. But then as you move into the higher dimensions of the fifth dimension and beyond, you move out of time, where there is no longer time as we know it. Wow. And now I, I know that's very um, confusing to many people because there are like sequences of events, but the difference when it's out of time is that each sequence is created from within ourselves. And we are at that state of consciousness where we don't have reactive creation where something happens and we go, Oh, I have to do something because that may or may not happen. Mm hmm. Yep. Because that's all fear based. Right. Exactly. Well, it's linear, linear time that, that doesn't exist anyway. Right. Exactly. I mean, how many times have you ever looked at it, looked at a book and seen a, a, an Indian in the 1700s, 1600s, 1500s, anywhere around there and that with a, with a wristwatch? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just they they're they're not just not there. I mean, you know, they they knew what was going on. I mean, they were more spiritual than we are right now, but we're getting there. I mean, there's not no two ways about it. I mean, we are realizing that hey, you know, we invented it and we goofed. Well, yes, and um anyone that knows Native Americans, they all know that they go by what they call Indian time. Right. Which is when they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> or or they look up in the air. And they say, well, that star is over there. That star is over there. It must be one o'clock at night or one o'clock in the afternoon. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and it's probably as far as I I know from anything I've I've read or guests that I've spoken to, it is really accurate. I'm sure it is because they're tuned in to the planet. Exactly. See, that's that's it. They're turned into or tuned into the earth. Yes, they are. Yeah, they live in unity. So you wanted me to talk about the multidimensional one? Oh, the ones yes. You... Oh, yes. Because as I, I said, to... I've, I've been accused of having a foot in both of them <laughs> a couple of times. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about that. And I will mention the divine compliment part because people always want to know about the divine compliment part. Um, okay. So the multidimensional self. Now, um, if you want to give me a... I mean, I wrote that book quite a while back now, and I have written 
several things, many things since then. So I don't know if I can say it exactly how they said it in the book. So ask me a question from the book and they'll get me there. I don't think, well, where it says two realities at once, it was, uh, it was from uh, Matria uh -huh. and Mitri. Yes. And okay. they said, right. would, exactly. yeah, we would yeah. like to take you on a multidimensional journey. And I'm I'm feeling that you know after after I read that part, this is something where they flashed things in front of you, and you wrote from them. I mean, you got pictures on this because they're talking about uh, the ship. They're talking about working as one to assist humanity and Gaia, which of course this is what we're trying to do now. But of course, there's a lot of people out there that that have brain blocks. Yes. <laughs> But it, they'll get there one way or the other. So yeah. what they were doing more or less was they were more or less really defining what it would be to be in a multidimensional journey. Yes. Well, the best way, this is one of these types of things, it's better to have a bit of an experience rather than an explanation mm -hmm. because it's person-specific. So if I were to explain what it is to me, that may not be what it is to anybody else. But there are certain octaves of reality. And the third dimension is the octave of reality that we're having this discussion on. Now, if we were in our dream state, then we would be having this in our dreams. And uh, it would be... Um, <clears throat> it would happen much faster, and we would have a hard time remembering it when we woke up. And so we all know about our dream state. Now, the next dimension is the fifth dimension, and the fifth dimension is a dimension of our light body. Now, we've talked about flashing into light body, and the Arcturians have actually showed me how to flash into light body. Um, not that we something we do with our sense of will. Uh, it is something that occurs within the oneness of the now when it is our now to return to our light body. Because on the ships, we might wear certain bodies like we would wear a costume if certain guests were coming onto the ship. But when we're relaxing and we're ourselves, we just like be our light body self, which basically means that we are made of light and that we can create any appearance that we wish to with our minds, with a combination of our minds and our thoughts. And, and in reality, that's what we do all the time. We create thought forms. We have a thought, and then we fill it with an emotion, and then we put our attention into it, and we create it in our lives. So if we have a negative thought and we fill it with fear, then we create that. But if we have a positive thought and we fill it with love, then that's what we create. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that happened in the book is that they bi-located, which is basically what a lot of us on Earth have done. By locating, see, when there isn't time and there isn't space, we don't have this, you only get one. No, you can have as many, ex we have myriad expressions of ourselves. And um, they by located um, into beings on Earth to assist. Now, at one point, Matria first start, started that, and she got a bit trapped and um, had difficulty. And Matria, that's a whole long story. I don't even. I think that might be in the second book. I'm not sure, but there. Um, kind of as the book goes on, maybe I shouldn't say this, is revealed that a lot of the characters in the book really were us. Like Matria and Matreya, I'm sure they're me um, on, on a starship, on that frequency of reality. Um, and I've had lots of experiences of the me in the land of fairy and all those fourth dimensional places. And I even remember the me on the sixth where we're just like, mm, like electrical circuits. Uh, I think it's in the second book that I go through all the dimensions of the mothership. Um, let me let me just throw something in there for a yes. second. This would be similar to an out of body experience. 
In other uh, words, you go to bed, you dream, yeah. but your dreams are the reality in another dimension that your essence goes to. Well, that my essence bilocates to. Right, bilocate, right. Yes, if I left, my essence left my body, I would wake up dead. So um, it is that bilocation. So we are learning, all of us are learning to bilocate because we're keeping our 3D anchor onto Earth because we are still dedicated to assisting our beloved planetary mother. Um, and we are bilocating to our fourth dimensional, fifth and sixth, whatever dimensional selves that we are able to expand our consciousness into. This is getting this is getting so cool. I mean, we are. I mean, seriously, Doctor, we we are or everything, and I've said it on the show many times. In fact, the the people on on the, you even have a comment on on the uh, on the board here that says love and light ever bodies. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, that's so I mean, that's, that's for yeah, everybody. That's, <laughs> that's that's coming down from Canada. We uh, have wonderful. we have there, there's a couple of things that we've discussed it many many times net on the show and that that. that Every single thing that you see, he, and you've said it. I said it in the introduction, as a matter of fact. Everything you hear, smell, touch, taste, whatever, it's all energy. It's yes. all us. We are it. Absolutely. We are part of it. Therefore, if we don't take care of all of it, it's not taking care of us. Yes, we are the ener- we are energy that has created a form so that it can live on. We are pure energy and we have created a third dimensional form so we can attach that third dimensional form to the third dimensional matrix of planetary Earth. Mm-hmm. And we are the energy inside. So if we eat an apple, we're not just eating the apple. We're eating the, our energy is taking the energy of the apple and eating the energy of the apple. Yeah. So we are merging with the apple, and the apple gets the experience of getting to be human, and we get the experience of getting to eat delicious food and being nourished. Oh, there you go. And that makes us happy, and that makes us our souls happy, and that's that's a good thing. Yes, um, definitely it does. We had we had also discussed on on a show and at about Atlantis. Yes. Now Atlantis began many millions of years ago, and when it did begin. They were light bodies, not human bodies. They took on human right. bodies way later. Yes. And they were the ones that actually unlocked on Earth with help from Pallades, Atorians, etc. Yes. To become human. Mm-hmm. They didn't the Adam come, Cadden. Right. They didn't come here 3D human. They yeah. in, They invented 3D human. Only as you said, to experience everything that the earth has to offer. Yes, it's much, it's exactly like a video game. If you want to play a video game, then you have to pick an avatar and it's like the movie Avatar Mm -hmm. to go into, put your consciousness into that avatar self and then whatever your consciousness tells your avatar self to do will influence how the avatar does on that game. But what happened on Earth is that the avatar self became so individuated, it forgot that it's just the lower frequency of this whole stream of consciousness. And then it was stuck in a game without that higher instruction and ran into all kinds of problems. (laughs) You're telling me. Oh, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. All kinds of problems. Yeah, like like one, like they, uh, well, first of all, uh, what was one of the things that, that someone was saying the other day? Uh, they took on this this feeling that like I am number one, so everybody was number one. There was not a number two, so therefore we got wars, we've got disease, we've got all kinds of crazy things. And that is just a misinterpretation of the message of we are one. Exactly, meaning we are all one being. Right. Yes, they got that number part in there. <laughs> well, they got the number right. So I mean, they, they were they were parts partly there. All right, yeah. so there is consciousness and conscious, but what about super consciousness? All right, so conscious, unconscious, super conscious, it's all about uh, frequencies. It's all about brain waves. Um, <clears throat> and I took a long 
long story. In fact, I have a package on that um, where I went through that on the blog. So you can scroll back on the consciousness on the bra- on my blog and see the whole presentation in detail. But there we have our uh, beta wave consciousness of daily third dimensional life. We have our alpha wave consciousness of when we are doing something that fills us with joy, you know, you get that, wow, this feels wonderful. That's because our consciousness has expanded and we can be very creative. And then we have our theta consciousness, which is more of our fifth-dimensional uh, traveling, multi-dimensional traveling beyond per- per different realities. And our gamma wave, uh, there's the delta, is it delta and gamma? Yeah, delta wave, very often if you delta on the table, then they say you're dead. Uh, and that's like a, a transitional, like a quiet wave that you don't stay in long because you're not really in your physical body and you haven't really moved up into your higher body. And then there's the gamma wave consciousness, which is your higher uh, fifth dimensional, multi dimensional. And, you know, return home consciousness. And each of those states of consciousness have a completely different experience of the very same thing. Hmm. Okay. I, what, would, what would that be? Okay. So, again, I think one example. Is it one picture is worth a thousand words? Yes. So I have to give visual, verbal pictures. Yeah. Okay. So... You're walking down the beach. You're walking down the beach and you're, you know, first off, you had a big, you had a hard day and you're like really grouchy and you're going to walk on that beach and you're not going to let your boss make you miss that walk on the beach and you're stomping along the beach and your bay wave of consciousness. But then the waves just go against the shore and the children are laughing and the sun is nice and it's like, oh, okay, you start oh, settling in. Maybe you jog a little bit. Maybe you, you know, take off your shoes and socks and you let yourself feel the warm, cool water on your body. And then you go into alpha wave and then you start thinking, oh, what a beautiful day. This feels really nice. And then you go into theta wave and you look over and you see the children have these like bright auras, these little yellow like bright auras and oh look at those children over there they've got some fairies that are playing with them and then you go all the way up into your delta consciousness and everything is just still for a moment it's just like a blink into this higher place and then you go into gamma wave consciousness and then you look up and you see wow look at that fleet of starships Uh, how could I have missed those they're all there and look Oh, my heavens, there's a Pleiadian, there's an Antarian, and that big blowing light, that's an Arcturian. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am home, and this is New Earth. Did you ever have anyone that that you spoke to, whether it was under your care? And I'm not, you know, not. I don't want to get into anybody's anybody's private lives. Right, exactly. (laughs) But do you ever have anybody that say, like, I looked up in the air and I saw 100 ships? I've never had anybody say I, I saw a hundred ships, but I've heard from many people that see ships, that uh, remember their experiences at night. Um, there's a lot of people that are really beginning to experience it. You know, there's and, other... Uh, Go ahead. Oh, okay. So I just got a message just the other day or this day. Or I don't remember when. No time, right? I live in the now, so forget. Don't ask me when. That's okay. Um, so they were say they uh, probably the Arcturians were speaking for the, the group and saying that um, there are uh, there are certain ships that they can't get too close to uh, to the Earth um, or even too much into the solar system because they are of such a high frequency it would disturb. You know, a lot of the, the things that the, the Venusians have come here. And I just heard from this other person. I don't know his name, but he's a really insider person on the YouTube. He said that all the planets have life, but they have life on the core of the planet, which is actually much more common than on the outside of the planet. And Earth has a 
whole civilization in the core, where all the ancient Lemurians and the um, Atlanteans that ascended and many galactics are all there. There And there have been some representatives that have come up to tell about the inner Earth. Um, so, too many words. Did I answer your question? I was just going to say thank you very much for saying that because now I know I'm not the only one that said that. Okay, good. <laughs> so now, okay, so now, now we're now we're good friends. <laughs> Believe me uh, when I tell yes, you, yes, we are good friends. <laughs> I, I this um, it goes on. The, the book goes on a little bit more, and I, and I was actually, you know, with, with all with all respect, I I was teasing about this really because I mean I've I've sort of done this myself once in a while. It says the sacred rock. Yes. This is the part where you were actually talking to, well, you were hunched against a huge rock, clenching a few possessions. You looked at my physical self. I could see how her inner conflict had robbed her of her beauty and made her body overly thin and pale. And we're talking about a huge rock. Yeah. And I thought it was a beautiful story because if you didn't, if you didn't know what, what you were actually talking to, you would think that you were talking to a woman. Or a friend, uh, a good friend. Mm -hmm. And it was yeah, an amazing, was amazing writing in, in the book. I mean, it was it was too cool. Oh, thank you. You want to explain a little bit about that? This actually came from um, uh, Materia. Yeah, uh, the one I call Materia. But, Materia, as you call, but I'll just say it because I'm going to say Materia. Cause, but um, yes, well, see, this, this whole part of the storyline is what we all have to go through through our process of ascension. And that first she uh, she's happy, she comes to her new life, but then she realizes that something is missing. She doesn't know what that something is, but she just knows that something is wrong and she has to find out what it is. And so she just sleeps, slips out early in the morning and goes off into the wilderness and walks and walks and walks, and by the time she gets out into the wilderness, she has been walking for days, she's exhausted, she's tired, she's sick. All of this darkness is coming to the surface of her beingness because she is ready to look at her true self. And so then she comes up to this rock, and she collapses against the rock. And when she collapses into the rock, she, like, uh, passes out, so to speak. And so she goes from her... Uh, daily uh, beta wave consciousness into alpha and theta wave consciousness and that rock becomes what it truly is on the higher frequencies is a portal into the core of the planet mm -hmm. and there are many portals in the core of to into the core of the planet and they will look just like rocks or trees or mountaintops or whatever they will look like because these are sacred doors, and you have to be at a high state of consciousness to be able to enter. And so because she has cleansed herself, she has felt all of her fears and agonies and brought them to the surface and become sick in the process of releasing this uh, fear from her system, that she is then able to perceive that the rock is actually a portal, and then she is able to have that courage to actually walk in to that portal and let me tell you something that is that's a trip and a half for sure i let me let me read something out of here and i thought i thought this was i mean the whole book anybody out there that's listening to me right now you got to read this you really really <laughs> do there's no two ways about it because this is too cool one of the pieces on the on the book says and i marked this because this is something that i believe in to myself we wish you to look around at the etheric forms of those in this meeting. For you are the ones who have shown the greatest dedication and commitment to creating a new reality based on multidimensional light and unconditional love. I mean, really? Come on. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is where we're going. You know what I mean? They, they forget about everything that you hear, everything you see on TV, all the dopes that you hear telling you what you should do and shouldn't do. Think for your, yeah. think to yourself. Think to your heart. I mean, it's all here. Yes, and, and that's what, when she went through the portal, she ended up in the core of the planet where the, um, the Elohim of the planet, the life force of the planet lived. And 
um, then all of those who had presented themselves as being ready to assist had sent their finer bodies into the core of the planet to have this meeting. And because they got the call of, of the Elohim, the Elohim is saying, I need your help. I want you to help us. Now, of course, this was exactly what is happening right now with Earth. And we do have a core of the planet. And in my webinars and whatever I do, very often we go into the core of the planet. And in the book, I, there's a lot that goes on in the core of the planet, um, the further books, because that is the... The energy field, that is where Gaia's consciousness is. And as we contribute our consciousness, because we're not taking our physical bodies into the core of the planet, and we are putting our higher dimensional bodies into the core of the planet, and Gaia's higher dimensional body, she's not taking her mountain ranges and rivers into the core of the planet, however there supposedly are both of those, uh, then... Uh, we ming intermingle our personal consciousness with our planetary consciousness. Ah. And when we intermingle our personal consciousness with our planetary consciousness, we don't want to do anything to the planet that we don't want to do to ourselves. There you go. Would we like to take a match and burn our arm just because we wanted to see how it looked? Mm-hmm. So we don't want to take a match and burn a tree just because we want to see what it looks like to watch that tree burn. And so all of those things that we, any destruction that we would do to the planet, we don't want to do anymore because that is us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let everybody kind of sit on that one for a second because that was, <laughs> that was, that was an awesome, an awesome uh, sentence right there. I mean, it said it all we wouldn't want to do to the planet that we wouldn't do to ourselves. And that is absolutely true. And look what we're doing to the planet. I mean, I, I see it all the time. You know, you go by, you go by areas and they're cutting down trees. Yeah. Well, didn't anybody get it through their thick head that when you touch, when you cut down a tree, you're cutting down, you're cutting the amount of oxygen that's being emitted by that tree into our atmosphere. Yes, exactly. You know, it's and like you're ruining an entire ecosystem for everything that lives on that tree. Exactly. So it's like knock knock to somebody's head, you know, like, hey, wake up, dude. It's it's yeah. it's crazy to say. But I mean, I'm I'm saying it that way so that people get it, you know, in their own language. But if you really think about it, this is nonsense. We're doing things because we can, not because we should, or not because we can't, or shouldn't. And Which worse is, of all the, the things, as far as I'm concerned, we are doing things because we're brainwashed into doing them. Bingo. That was that was That's the next That's the worst sentence. scenario. Exactly. Now, yeah. all right. You know, I, I was going to, I was thinking about this as you were saying it, but, you know, movies like Journey to the Center of the Earth isn't that far away from reality. No. I don't think so at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jules Verne, he didn't miss much. Oh no, 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 he was on, he was on top of something. <laughs> yeah, every book that he wrote is now coming true. So, <clears throat> all right, you have you have another the, to go on in a book in that a little bit. The the part that says the cave. Oh yes, the home that she created for herself. Oh yeah, this is this is about uh, she was pulling herself in a tight ball ball and pushed against the rock in an urgent and futile attempt to find warmth i mean this yeah. is we're talking about we're talking about some really really heavy stuff here and and uh you know if you go to the second part of it for anybody that's listening right now and that i'm going to give you something i grew it says i grew healthier every day and slept soundly every night now we've talked about this on the show you get yeah. into that that it's a wavelength it's a frequency yeah. area that your whole body just just gives up. The energy is just there. Yes. From from her meeting with the Elohim of the planet in the core of the planet, she went out into the wilderness uh, close to that place and learned how to absolutely 100% live on in unity with the planet. And she spoke with the planet and she learned, Oh, I can eat this and I can eat that. And guess what? I can make this and I can make that. And she had a few little possessions and she absolutely took care of herself. Um, 
off of the planet. She became completely united with it. Nice. Yes, and so she moved from personal consciousness to planetary consciousness. And we we can do that. I mean, yes, they're, they're, we can. yeah. I mean, you know, everybody everybody's probably listening to this and saying, "Really?" You know, I, it's not not really. It is. You know, it's not. I mean, is with quotes on both sides. Yes, we can do that. It's it's in our it's in our body. It's wired into us. As Doctor had said, we watch too much TV. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, God, you listen to CNN, you're really in trouble. But anyway, I know yeah. that CNN loves me, but that's okay. There's lots of good movies. I get good movies or some series. I just read anything off my computer or off my Apple TV. I haven't watched regular television in so long or read any kind of regular news or listened to any regular. I get more than I can tolerate, and it's not my reality, so I refuse to participate. But isn't it, isn't it great, though? And I do it in the morning, too, when I'm up. I'm up at 4 with and everybody knows this because I've said it a billion times and I walk the dog at four o'clock in the morning then I come in and I do all my work and that that I do for the channel and everything else on the computer and everything at four o'clock in the morning so therefore I'm taking everything all the news that I want to look at not yeah. something that's shoved down my throat yeah I don't have to watch anything I can take what I want what I want to know about what I want to learn about because I want to learn that's why I'm doing it from the computer because I want to right. learn about it. But when you're watching TV, you don't have a choice. So they just keep throwing it at you. Yes, and there's a brainwashing of all the commercials. If you eat this, you'll be healthy. If you do that, you'll be thin. If you do this, you'll get rich. Um, and all that 3D, 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 3D. And mm. if you don't, then, oh, this bad thing will happen to you. Yeah, not to, not to throw out the uh, the other part. It's new and improved. Yes, no, yeah, no, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, Canada saying I don't watch news. Her name is Tara, by the way. I don't watch news or read newspapers either, Bob. <laughs> there you go. And the next part in the book and that is called change. And of course, we hear about change all the time, but we don't realize what it really means. But you did define it in the book, and it does say here though: the more you return to your fifth dimensional resonance, the less you feel comfortable. In a body of gender. Yes. Which is really cool because if you're going to resonate in, a, in another dimension, this is, I mean, hey, if I could do that right now, I'd do it right now. And I probably can <laughs> after the show, but that's, that's a little bit <laughs> Well, we can all do it right now, but we're in active duty, just like Matria Matreya. When they came down in the later books to assist the people on Earth. The first part talks about the Pleiades and then uh, the, the mothership and the ascension of the Pleiades, of their Palladian society, and how they do that. And then it moves towards Earth and how they work with people on Earth now, which they are doing now a lot, mm -hmm. um, as, as all the galactics are. But they have to... Um, they have to do it through our consciousness because that's the only way we can perceive them. So we have, it's much like if you are going to watch television, if you want to watch something on channel two, you can't have the thing uh, on channel five. You have to put it on channel two because that's where the radio is. If you want to find something on a computer, you got to put in the search engine what you want in order for it to come up. Right. And in terms of information from a higher self, this calibration is based on the frequency of our consciousness. And so when we go inside and we raise the frequency of our consciousness, we can all get messages. And I hear on my blog from so many people, they get amazing messages all the time. There's really a lot of us, but there's a lot more that probably aren't us. Do you ever hear people in that that say sometimes they get messages and sometimes they get nothing? Uh, like in yes. other words, they're they're edging up. Like we're we're all doing it, and I'm going to get that we're getting to that in the book in just a second. But we are edging up into frequencies not only because of ourselves or meditation or whatever you know or whatever you use to get there, but the Earth itself since twelve twenty one. 2012 we've moved 
in yes. our solar system. We are in a different area. We're vibrating at a different vibration right now at a different frequency. And the Earth itself is emitting a different frequency. Yes. So therefore, whether we like it or not, and as I said, I'll get into this in the, in the book, whether we like it or not, we are going to be raised in our frequency, but we can get there faster by doing it a little different. By surrendering into the process and listening to our higher self. Bingo. But the thing is, no matter what we do, we are wearing these old Model T 3D Earth vessels. And I don't know about the rest, but this last couple of weeks, this energy has been so intense, so hot, so to speak. Like hot, when you speak on electronics, it's hot because it's a high frequency, it's mm. ready to go. Um, that my physical body, I mean, my knees went out, I was exhausted. And I've learned that once you bring in that higher frequency, the first thing that's going to happen is that you're going to have to go through a process of releasing, just like Matreya, she had to get sick from she walked along the woods, and in Matre, when she met him later, he had his whole process that he had to go through. We have to go through this process of eye-to-eye, hello, darkness. Mm. This is my own inner darkness. I choose to love you unconditionally. I choose to bless you with a violet fire, and I am transmuting this darkness into a higher frequency, but it won't be fun, it won't be easy, and it will take time. Oh, yeah. And if that's occurring to you, dear listeners, you're, this is normal. Don't think you're doing it wrong. No, this is how it works. There is a section in the book, Spontaneous Awakening. Yeah, And it says, at this point in your personal planetar- planetary ascension process, more and more of you are having spontaneous awakenings. And it also says that these awakenings often occur long after a long bout of, and you've just, I mean, it was perfect out of the book, of depression, mm-hmm. illness, bad luck, everything we were just speaking of. Yeah. So, therefore... If we're going through this process right now, then this, all these problems like depression, anxiety, illness, et cetera, are sort of, um, how would you say it, residuals of the process to get where we're going. Yes. Well, we have to... We have to shed our skin. It, we're like hermit crabs. First, we had just a small little state of consciousness, and a little shell was just fine to contain our little bit of awareness. But then we're bursting out of it, and so we have to shed that old shell. And from the shedding of the old shell until we get to the newer, bigger, more improved shell, we're like naked walking around in the bottom of the ocean. And so, uh, therefore... We have to be willing to go through this process. We have to be willing to remember to say, no, you did not make a mistake. Mistake, yes. This is a part of the process. In every, if you look at all of the ascended masters, if you look at all of their lives, they all went through an immense process of ascension. They went through days and days and weeks and months and years of meditations, of half starving, of having nothing, of wandering the wilderness, because they were the first ones through. And so now we don't have to go through as much, but we still have to release our density in order to fully live in our light. Oh, we got a lot of work to do, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Well, the good thing is it's not bound by time. That's true. So we could have a spontaneous combustion whenever it is our now to go into that place. Hmm. One of the things you said in here, in other words, now your multidimensional operating system is integrating into your third or fourth dimensional brain, heart, or body. You know you cannot go back. Yes. There is no yeah. backwards, only forward. Yes. No, you, you're you more than halfway across the stream. Oh, yeah. Do you think? And so you say, wait, wait, That's a, that looks pretty <laughs> deep over there, but that's much harder, and I'm not doing that again. Um, no, no. <laughs> I, not, not in my lifetime, anyway. No. Uh, the next part of the book is the restoration chamber. Oh, yes. This is when Matre went on to the starship. 
Right. Exactly. The Arturian starship. After accidentally navigating my scout ship with my mind, our society with Palladius was at the same stage of ascension as your earthly society is now. Yes. Wow. Yes. And the operation, when he... When he was able to pilot the ship with his mind, he passed his initiation to be able to go to the starship. And what that means, to put that into a few words, hopefully, is that what he did is that he let go of all the, I can't do that. He was doing something that was absolutely impossible, and he was willing to believe that he could operate this ship with his mind. And his mind is electricity, the ship is electricity, so why couldn't his mind interact with the ship? And so he was able to learn that state of mastery of his mind, and that's what allowed him. He passed his initiation, and that allowed him to go to the mothership to be able to train with the Arcturians. So in other words, they actually literally were there. And yes. knew what to do. You know, we've had people on the show and before and that said they were on a ship. And one of them that was that was on the on the, the show and that said that said, you know, because I asked them, I said, Did you see the control panel? They said, No, we didn't. <laughs> and I was like, Oh yeah? Well then what does that mean? Hmm? Like it like somebody's like operating this through uh, uh you know, tele tele uh you know, through through thoughts, through their mind. Steering the ship. I've kind of seen what the bridge is. And, um, of course, I have a complete Star Trek, you know, Mm -mm. junkie. And so I've seen them all a thousand times because I so love being on the ship. I like the society on the ship. And I like the way the people think in the future. It's, like, wonderful. But it looks a bit similar in that in that there is a big view screen and there are certain people that are there. But it is all – the ship is a living body. And I think it's in the, the second book where I go through all the different dimensions of all the, the ship and what each part does. It's a living being. And the ship – keeps track of everyone and everyone can always talk to everyone on the ship within the now and talk to the ship on the now. So, um, yeah. So it's, it's consciousness. Now in all of these books from one to four, this is, these are the stories that were passed to you. In other words, in other words, they had, they had an order for these to be told so that we in our third D life can understand what they're talking about. Yes, they were, and actually the fourth book I'm splitting into two books because it, the others were 200 pages, that was 400 pages, and the last one has really amazing information, and I wanted people to be able to take a break in between. Um, but, um, yes, this is exactly how it was given to me. It was given to me, like, beginning to end. It's kind of, it's as if, uh, I picked up the book where we were at that time and um, just moved through it. It It is, the book is a manual for personal and planetary ascension. It actually is. And I say I'm the channel of it, but I don't say that I'm the creator of it because I was very passive throughout the process. But I'm also that Palladian being. Matri and Matre are me on the starship. That is like, I am the Arcturian. I am, Matria was the very first person that came to me back in the early 90s. So my 3D self was actually taking dictation from my higher fifth dimensional on, because as the book proceeds, it goes all the way to Oversoul. So it goes through all the dimensions with the people. So, um, it was me, and it is me, and all of you who have experiences of this higher being, that higher being is you. That. And when we can detach from the, oh, I'm limited to this physical body, and move into the, I'm wearing the physical body because this is the way that I am, I'm on shore, I'm on, uh, I'm on assignment, to come to Earth to help the planet, and my higher me is also on the starship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because it 
goes even beyond your fifth dimension by quite a bit. Nice. Very, very well said. What I was going to say was that so many people that have been saying that, and like all of a sudden, you you notice how more people are believing it? Yes. Before, they would just say, what? What are you talking about? Explain it to me. And then you explain it to them, and then they go, I still don't get it. And now, all of a sudden, now they're getting it. Wow. Well, I think that's why the the books were given to me as a novel. In fact, all of my books look like novels, but they're true. Uh, Because the truth is best carried in a good story. And then people can read the story and say, oh, that's a cool story. A little out there. I don't know if I believe that or not, but it's a really cool story. So they keep there and they keep reading it. And then they have a dream about it. And then because that information is in there, they begin to see reality a little bit differently. And then they have a personal experience. But if you just give it to them right off the bat, then they'll go, ah, that's crazy. I'm not reading this. <laughs> yeah, right. no, I'm not going to read this. What are you, crazy? I already read the first but, one. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. What we have to do, I mean, seriously, I mean, we've, and I've still only just slightly scratched the, the surface of this book, even though we've got, I mean, the chat box is full of comments and everything, and they're coming back from all over. Oh, great. And, and I'm glad that people are understood. Well, they understand me pretty good because I, I speak in everybody's language. But the thing is, we really, really have to get down. There is an address that's on here right now on the chat box. I want to remind everybody in that that it was put there. We have a studio that's in Australia. John Allen, who's the director and producer in Australia, put it here. It's www.multidimensions.com slash free books slash Oh, those books aren't up for free anymore, though. Sorry. They're not. No, they've all been published and they're on Amazon. So I don't have, I can't do anything about it. They went off into the bigger world. Bummer. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what we're, what we're going to do here then is they, they can go into the blog though, right? They can, uh, yeah, sort of. I had to kind of hide it because, you know, you, Amazon can't charge if it's free. But uh. they're they're not expensive. They're not expensive at all. And you can also get um, the uh, books that you read on your computer, uh, you know, and you get a free Kindle with it if you buy that. And that's even less expensive. Ah, it's even cooler. Okay. Yeah. All right. So but we're it's not what... an expensive event. And the thing is, if we can go out and buy junk food and see horror movies, why can't we buy a book about Ascension? And to tell you the honest to God truth in that the book the book is written in a way that it's a story. I mean it's it's good. I mean you can actually understand it. And I'll tell you the honest to God truth, Doctor. A yes. lot of things that that are said, I'm I it's Greek to me. I mean I have to read it and understand it first, you know, to get my head around it. But I you know, I've been doing it for a while and I I think I know pretty much net what is going on and where we are going. And it's funny because you turn around and you say to somebody, hey, listen, you know what? I don't care whether you know what I'm talking about or not. You're going there anyway. So what? <laughs> so, I mean, hey. yes. I mean, and, really. And, and you hope you're going there anyway because there are, you know, we are choosing our reality by choosing the frequency that we wish to uh, resonate to. So there are beings such as, you know, Illuminati, Cabal, that are not resonating to a frequency that they're going to be able to have these experiences until they raise their frequency. Yes. Perfect. And, yeah. you know, people do things, though, by experience or by example. So therefore, yes. when they start seeing more and more and more people who do it, people will, you know, it'll be just like anything else. That people will start following other people. And if if you do want to to get those books, you could just go to Amazon dot com and uh, look up either Palladian Perspectives on Ascension or Suzanne Lee L I E, and that'll take you to that page. Well, Doctor, you're going to have to come back on the show because we're going to have to go through two, three, and four. I would absolutely adore to do so because I think that these these are not my books. These are the books that came through me to Earth, and they are just like a workbook on ascension. So I would very much love to do that. Yeah, I'm serious. I mean, this is this is something that that people really. I mean, really, what we're explaining here, you hear it. I mean, I have shows, I have hosts that discuss this all the time, but this is like the directions. This is like a menu. Yeah, you know, it's a how-to. 
Yeah, it's a how to. Well, yeah, but it's like uh, what do they call it? Um, 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 let me see, interdimensional for dummies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> interdimensional for dummies. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. And I mean, seriously speaking, this is not hard to understand. None of it was hard to understand. So therefore, we got to do two, three, and four. Great, and get that one out there. So thank you very, very much for being with me on the show, Doctor. It was Thank it you. was great. It was my honor. That. It was an honor having you on the show, honest. Thank you. And it's nice meeting all of you that are out there in Cyberland and um hope you enjoy the books. All righty. Doctor great. Thanks a lot. Yes, ma'am. We will talk again. Okay. I look forward to that. Now to everybody out there, I want to tell you guys something. What you just heard is real. You've heard it before. You hear it plenty of times on the show. It's about time. God bless y'all. Bob Charles.